so today we will be going through the topic uh, depreciation determination. We will talk mainly about the useful life and lease term. We'll be going through various scenarios to see how the application considers various conditions to determine whether to use the useful life or lease term for de uh, depreciation calculation. So according to uh, the standard, depreciation should be over the shorter of useful life of the asset and the lease term unless the title to the asset transfers at the end of the lease term, in which case the depreciation is over the useful life. Here we can see how Nakisa follows this. So if a contract has a purchase option exercise, the system uses the uh, useful life of the asset to uh, depreciate the as asset. And if we don't have a, uh, a purchase option or if the purchase option is unexercised, then the system uses the lower of useful life um, or lease term. So useful life uh, uh, for each uh, class of the asset is configured in the manager page. So if you go to the manager page. And master data configuration, we are selecting a system. And a company. And if we go to the asset setup, and under asset class, we have external asset map uh, class mapping, and we have the um, uh, useful life in month and year. And in the uh, user interface, uh, for uh, we can see the useful life under lease component. And we can see the uh, useful life for this contract. It is as per the asset class that's been selected and configured over here. So we can change the useful life either through the manager page using uh, the edit button over here. We can change the years or months over here. Or we can actually change the uh, uh, useful life override the from the user interface if the enable a uh, useful life edit is uh, enabled in the master uh, manager page so uh, we uh, one thing we need to keep in mind just a second here yeah. so we need to note that um the uh, change in useful life should be following a change in policy. So we do offer the possibility to override the useful life for special circumstances. For example, when we have when the lease starts with the carryover balances, when we don't have the useful life as per the asset profile, and we need to show the remaining useful life instead. And um, if for example, during an event like abandoning an asset, then we can reduce the useful life. Change should not happen just because, and uh, we need to stick with what we have in the depreciation profile. So now let's move on to various scenarios. First, we will create a contract with lease term and useful life 12 months, and then we will add an extension. So let's go to the application and I'm creating and I'm creating a contract here. I'm copying a contract for now and So we have a contract with a uh, contract rate 2 percentage, 360 convention is on and compounding frequency is monthly. And I'm creating a lease component for this. I'm selecting the asset class as equipment and over here we have the useful life and for uh, for this scenario we need the useful life to be 12 months so I'm overriding it. 
and I'm going to the terms and condition and we are adding a term for 12 months. Base rent, the lease amount is 1000. Amount frequency one time and monthly. So my uh, first payment date is on 1st January and I need a 12 month period. And I'm selecting the same for the terms and conditions. Start and end date. So we have 12 months, least term. Submit. And I'm activating the contract. And the AG. Confirming the certification. Sorry, Pratiba. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you for a bit. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to uh, reiterate a request that Lionel already put in the chat. If you have any question, comments, uh, please raise your hand, put it in the comments. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, to take them. Thank you. And Go I'm ahead, Pratiba. And here, when we check the schedule, all column, we have the lease term for 12 months and the asset is depreciated over the 12 months. Now, let's add an extension. So I'm going to the contract level to add a lease modification. And I am adding an extension from December. And I'm going to add an extension over here. Lease amount, I'm keeping it at 1000, one time and monthly. I'm adding an extension for six months. And I'm approving them. From the AG level, I'm exercising the extension and I'm sending it to assessment. And I want the extension from December. Now, when we check the schedule, all column and I'm taking all year, we have the leave term for um, 18 months. But the asset has been um, depreciated from the 12th month because the useful life is uh, less than the lease term now. Do anyone have any question? Okay, now let's move on to the second scenario. Um, let, let me add a bit more more color into that, Pratiba, sorry to interrupt you. So uh, uh, the scenario that uh, you've just seen, so if for whatever reason, the useful life in the contract is not matching your depreciation profiles. And then when you exercise an extension, your term of the contract is higher than the useful life that you have in the contract. You will have the situation that Pratiba just shown you. And uh, we wanted to uh, present you with this scenario that we encountered in in some recent uh, situation with uh, some of our users, and we hope uh, it clarifies why you have uh, you have such situation. So uh, we go through a different scenario, and we wanted to present uh, this topic that we covered. 
um, under some other sessions as well, because we uh, we realize that uh, many of you encounter similar situations. So if you have specific questions, if you want to share your own case scenario, please do. We would love to uh, to go through that. Thank you, Kathleen. Now uh, let's move on to the scenario two. Uh, now let's say we have a contract with lease term 10 months and the useful life is 12 months. We have the lease term lower than the useful life. So let's create another contract. And let's go to the lease component and we have the useful life 12 months and I'm changing the terms and condition. And I have a lease term for 10 months. Now let's send this to approval. Approve. Bring it to approval. And I'm confirming the classification. And I'm activating the uh, AG now. Now we can see that we have a lease term for 10 months and the asset has been depreciated over these 10 months since the um, lease term is lower than the useful life. Now let's add an uh, extension to this contract. So again, I'm going to the contract level to add a lease modification. And I'm adding an extension over here. Again, I want the extension for six months. I'm confirming this one. I'm going to the AG level to excise the uh, extension. And I want this from the fixed month. Next. And let's look at the schedule now. Now we can see that we have uh, the lease term of 16 months. And we can see uh, the event has taken place on the sixth month. And the uh, asset has been depreciated for uh, uh, over 12 months because the, uh, the useful life is 12 months. And right now uh, the lease term has become more than the useful life. So from the 12th month, the asset is uh, the NBV is set to zero. Now 
Now, moving on to the third scenario. Here we have a contract where the lease term is 12 months and the useful life is 24 months. And we have a uh, and we have a purchase option, but we are not excising it. So again, let's go to the application. And I'm copying this contract. Naming it as test three. So here I have to change my useful life. Useful life is 24 months. And I am adding a purchase option. I'm adding purchase option from October. And I'm also changing the base rent uh, to make it 12 months. Now I'm activating the contract. And in the AG level, I am not excising the purchase option for now. So I'm sending it to assessment and let's see the schedule. Here the, uh, we have the lease term for 12 months. And the asset has been depreciated over 12 months because right now the useful life is more than the lease term. And if we if we go uh, to our contract and I'm reworking this one and I'm exercising the purchase option. Now let's look at the schedule. Once the purchase option is excised, the system will consider the use for life instead of the lease term. So here we have 12 months lease term, but the asset is not completely depreciated because the depreciation is based on the useful life. Uh, do anyone have any questions? As mentioned earlier, we are welcoming your questions and your comments. So uh, once the purchase option is exercised, like in this situation, uh, depreciation is calculated over the useful life as based on the depreciation profile. So in a lot of situations, as the useful life will be higher than the term of the contract, and the end of the term, the net book value will not be zero. It will be the value that ultimately will be transferred within the own asset once uh, in the purchase option is uh, is exercised completed. So let's move on to the next scenario. Here we are changing the useful life. So we have a contract with lease term 12 months and useful life is also 12 months. And on 1st June, uh, there is, uh, um, that's the beginning of the sixth month, we are reducing the useful life. And the remaining life is just one month. So let's create a contract. I'm copying the contract. I'm copying this contract and this is test five and submit.
So the useful life is 12 months. And we have terms and condition. We have a base rent for 12 months. And I'm activating this contract. Sending to assessment and I am classifying it as financing lease and I'm confirming classification. Now let's set the reception date. And I'm activating this contract. Now, if we check the schedule, here we can see the lease term is for 12 months and the asset is depreciated over those 12 months since the useful life and the lease term are same. Now, let's add an event. from June 1st. So let's say we are depreciate, uh, we are uh, reducing the useful life from June 1st. So five months have already been used and now I need a remaining one month uh, useful life. So we go to the lease component level. And in definition, we have all uh, so we need to sum the five months that's already been completed and the one month remaining. So the useful life is six months now. And I am sending it to approval and I'm approving that. And in the AG level, I am sending it to assessment from June. Now let's check the schedule. All columns. So we can see the lease term is 12 months and there has been an event on the sixth month. And for the asset depreciation, we have depreciation for five months and on the sixth month the NPV is set to zero since we have only one month remaining so the entire asset was depreciated on the sixth month do anyone have any question Um, I guess this is a similar situation that we've seen in uh, uh, some previous scenario you showed, Pratiba, scenario one or two, yeah. where by adding the extension um, and with the, uh, with the useful life uh, already reaching the end, we have the full adjustment for, uh, for the asset to recognize as depreciation in the very period of the extension so one of the points here that we wanted to make as you uh, as you saw Pratiba is, is showing this um, in in real life uh, as you get to uh, to the schedule for validation especially in such scenarios um, you have the option of checking going back deleting the draft the validation part is uh, is very important especially in this situation and uh, probably another point that uh, we wanted to make here related to the depreciation profiles uh, for those of you connected to SAP, those are being synchronized with the details that you have in SAP. So the, it's very important that you understand what are those profiles and how they're 
uh, they're feeding into the Nakisa master data, and then what action needs to be um, to be done through um, through the event. So once again, uh, please let us know your specific scenario. We we really love to to get into a larger discussion with you based on your specific cases. Now we can see here um, if we want to see the useful life and lease term for each contract, we have a different reports we can use. First is data quality integrity report. So if we go to the application and in the additional report, we check the data quality integrity report. And if we generate, I have already pre-generated them. So in the data quality integrity report, we have the details of all the contract and we have the useful life in month. Also, we have um, all the disclosure report, all the and the all the uh, disclosure reports have a session where we can see the useful life. For example, let's say um, asset roll forward report. In asset roll forward report two, we have the useful life in AG level as well the lease component level. And the other way we can see the useful life is through contract export. So if we go to the uh, main menu, we have import export information. And we select the export contract. And I'm selecting the system, the lease area, and the business unit required, and the company code. We can also select the contract IDs if required, and we can submit them. And we will get a list of contract. Let's export them. And we will get the list of contract as well as uh, with all the details including the useful life. Since we have a lot of contacts, it's going to take some time. Now, a few points here that uh, details about the useful life uh, that is captured within the contract. As Pratima mentioned, uh, you can obtain that information through several reports or functionalities that we have available. All our disclosure reports contain that information. We made that enhancement several versions ago. Uh, most of you are uh, within the latest version, um, so you will be able to, to see that. The data quality integrity report had that information uh, uh, from, uh, from the very beginning of the deployment of the report, the same as uh, the export of the contract. So within the list component tab, you will have that information about the useful life. Now, if you want to compare and if uh, this topic is raising some questions, some doubts, and if you want to compare with the profile that you have in your master data, uh, you will need to link to your financial administrator to ask for uh, for an extract of, uh, of the information that you had in your master data. Pratibha showed that at the very beginning in the asset setup, you can see the profile determination. So uh, 
As uh, we are reaching the end of the contact that we had, we were really hoping that this uh, is raising more questions from your side. So we're opening the floor for any questions.